Good morning, Calvary. It is great to see you. And today uh, we're sharing our word for the day from 1 John chapter 2. Uh, now there's a big issue I want to talk about uh, in this passage uh, in just a moment. It's really an issue that I've been asked about throughout the years, which is uh, can a Christian lose their salvation? Can somebody who uh, you know, has identified as a follower of Jesus fall away uh, and become lost again? And I want to talk about that because this passage actually talks about that. So let's look at, uh, at 1 John chapter 2. I'm going to just read verses 18 through 23. I want you to hear this, but uh, before we get to the big issue, I want to talk about some side issues that come up in this passage. Uh, John says, children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Uh, now, there's some, some issues that uh, just kind of come up, and so let me just mention these. First of all, he mentions the last hour and the Antichrist is coming. Uh, if you were raised in the church, at least the evangelical church, you heard all about the Antichrist, the end times is always a conversation. I just want you to know that since the time that Jesus ascended to heaven, left the disciples, the Holy Spirit came, uh, the idea is we've been in the last days. We've been in the end times. And John talks about the last hour. The, you know, the end is near. The Antichrists are coming. It, it, we gotta pay attention. And, and, and the reality is, uh, right now, as I share this, we are closer to the day of Jesus' return than any day before. That's right, we're closer. We don't know when it is, uh, but the Apostle John thought it was the last hour. The Apostle Paul thought he was in the last days. Uh, so we're getting closer, and Jesus is coming, and that's a reality. The, uh, the other thing that, that he mentions is our identity. Because he says, whoever confesses the Son has the Father. Whoever. You confess Jesus, then you have the Father. But if you deny that Jesus is the Christ, you have no part of God. He is not your father. You're not included in his kingdom. Again, a lot of people get uh, a little bit edgy or, or unsettled at this point because uh, it's saying that other religions are wrong and Jesus is the only way. And I'm okay saying Jesus is the only way because Jesus said he was the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. And John says it right here. He, he says, look, whoever confesses the Son has the Father, but whoever denies Jesus is the Christ, he's not of God. So. Those are the kind of side issues I wanted to, to touch on, but I wanted to address that big issue of how do you understand people who at some point in their life identified as a follower of Jesus, as a Christian, and then they fell away. They walked away from God. Uh, they don't want to have anything to do with God. They even denounced Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So how do we understand that? Can somebody lose their salvation? Well, uh, when somebody leaves the church, somebody who's been identifying as a Christian uh, walks away, there's really two understandings that are biblical. Two ways to, to see that, because here's, here's what I know. Whoever has the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father. Uh, see, once you enter into this life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, once he's made you a new creation, I don't think you can lose that. I don't think you can ever let that go. I don't think you can ever slip up and, and give it back. I, I think you're forever in relationship with Jesus as Savior when you confess him. So how do we understand those people then that, that walk away? Uh, maybe you've uh, had a child that walked away and you're praying for them. Maybe uh, you had a parent that led you to Christ, but then now they don't believe. Maybe you, know, maybe you had a friend that was really on fire for God one day, and then the next day they're, they're just done with it. How do you understand that? Well, uh, again, there's two ways to understand it biblically. Jesus talked about one in Luke chapter 15 in the story of the prodigal son. Uh, the prodigal was a son of the father and he went to a faraway land. He rebelled against the father. He rejected the father's values, but he was still the son. 
And one day he came to his senses and he came home and the father received him with open arms and threw a party. There are some people that, uh, you know, are Jesus followers, but they walk away for a long time. It might be a season. It, that season might be a, a month. It might be a year. It might be a decade. It might be multiple decades. But I've known a lot of people who, who spent a lot of time in the faraway land living in the pig pen and, until they finally came home and reunited with the Father. Now, the second way of understanding people who walk away is pretenders. People who say they're followers of Jesus, but they really aren't followers at all. And, and John makes that really clear when he says in verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. If they'd been of us, they would have continued with us. But because they went out from us, they proved that they weren't of us. And he actually calls them antichrists. See, um, those are the two options that you have. People that, that look like they fell away from the faith, they're either a prodigal living in a faraway land or they were a pretender who never experienced that life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. And here's the tough part. From the outside, we don't know who's a pretender and who's a prodigal. So what do we do? We love them, we pray for them, we love them, we pray for them, and we look for those opportunities to encourage them to connect with Jesus because he's the only one who can redeem our lives and he's the only one who can save us. So if you've got more questions about that, feel free to email me at, at pastorchad at calvarylhc.com. Be glad to answer those uh, and, uh, and talk with you because I want you to know, first of all, that if you've had that life-changing relationship with Jesus, then you're secure in that. And then I want you to live for God with joy and with certainty that you're his. God bless. Have a great day.